you gotta love a good cup of coffee. I'm actually taking a little break from searching for my, uh-oh, wedding ring. It went MIA on Saturday. So I have a four-year-old son that loves to roll it around and I have not been able to find the thing for the last few days. So I'm gonna clear my head, take a little break. I've got a critical question I'm going to answer here today. But before we dive into this, if you're currently not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. So moving forward, is the Panasonic GH5 still worth it in 2019? Now, this is an interesting question for me because guys, I'm a very late bloomer when it comes to Panasonic. I've always been a Nikon guy, and then when my son was born, I added a Sony A6300 to my camera bag. I've had several Sony since then, but it was just this year, guys, just this year that I picked up the GH5. Now, that's saying something because the GH5, as you know, came out two and a half years ago, March 2017. See, I told you, I was late to the Panasonic party. But let me tell you right now, this camera is definitely still worth it. But I'm not going to sugarcoat it and only give you the reasons why I think it is a hell of a camera. Instead, let's talk about the both the good and the bad. That way you get a more complete picture of what this camera has to offer. Now, let's start off with the good. Now, what I like about the GH5 headlining the pros of this camera is the image stabilization. The in-body image stabilization is absolutely incredible and gives you amazing video quality without the need for a tripod or a gimbal. It was way ahead of its time in 2017 and is still the best IBIS out there today. If you use an optical image stabilized lens with this camera, you get the benefit of double stabilization. But even if the lens isn't stabilized, the GH5's in-body stabilization will still compensate for the blur. Now, honestly, you can shoot smooth video while shooting handheld with this camera. The stabilization is that good. Another feature I really appreciate is the battery life is absolutely crazy for a mirrorless camera. Honestly, I've gone shooting still photos on a single charge during the day, and I've not had any issues. I can get upwards of 400 shots on a single charge and shoot video two hours without having to recharge a battery or swap out a battery. A third feature I really love is that it's an idea B-roll camera. Between the image stabilization and the incredible slow motion video, I'm talking 4K 60 frames per second or 1080p at 120 frames per second, the creative possibilities with this camera are off the charts. Now, unlike some of the other mirrorless cameras, there's no time limit on 4K recording either, apart from how much battery life you have left and how much room there is on your memory card. <laughs> Now I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the image quality with this camera. Now I know the image quality on this camera with its Micro Four Third sensor is going to struggle to match that of a similarly priced APS-C camera, but Panasonic has done a great job with the last few years with the design of their sensors, and the GH5 definitely benefits from that. Now, it produces images with good dynamic range and color renderation, and the fact that there's no optical low-pass filter means the images have improved detail as well, so especially at lower ISO values. You'll find that as the ISO increases, the noise will increase as well, but it's nothing terrible that can't be fixed in post-processing. Now, would I opt to take this as my only camera on a trip over my Nikon Z7 or Sony a6400? Probably not if I'm shooting stills, but if I want to take just one camera for video work, this bad boy is going to be it. Now lastly, the auto system focus on this camera works very well, and that's not something I would have said back in 2017. For the longest time, the autofocus system was terrible in this caribou. Its continuous autofocus was heavily criticized with many shooters saying it lagged far behind the competition. Now, over the years, Panasonic has released multiple firmware updates to fix the autofocus problems. In 2018, a firmware update corrected an issue in which the focus point would shift to the background while tracking a subject. This problem occurred when shooting stills and video, and this update corrected both problems. Likewise, the October 2018 update improve the accuracy of detecting a subject by optimizing the focus area settings in the camera's tracking speed. Now, since this update, in the previous ones in May of 2018 and October 2017, the autofocus performance of the GH5 is much better. And now we're gonna discuss what I don't like about this camera. Now, my biggest complaint about the GH5 is that unlike other cameras I have, you can put the battery in just one way. That means that if you aren't paying attention and not naming any names, you can accidentally put the battery in backwards. And since the battery has a little notch, right here, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, on the opposite side of the connectors, when you accidentally put the battery in backwards, one of the little metal conductors in the camera will catch this and prevent you 
from getting the battery out. And it is a bear to get out. And if you do manage to get the battery out, it bends the connector inside the camera. And when you go to push the connector back, it snaps. And once this happens, you have to pay $140 respectively to get the damn thing repaired. Now, another sticking point with the camera is something I mentioned as a pro of this camera is the image quality. Like I said earlier, the Panasonic has made great strides with their sensors and the GH5 has better image quality than its predecessors as a result. But this is definitely a video camera first and foremost in a still camera second. It can't compete with my A6400 or Z7 in the image quality department or my D850 for that matter. Lastly, as much as the autofocus system has improved, it still struggles to focus on people's face in low light situations. Now, if you're recording your significant other on your back patio at night, you might find that the autofocus system hunts for focus even after the firmware updates that I previously mentioned. But if you're filming the city skyline and cars passing at night, it's a different story and the autofocus system works extremely well. So in the end, the pros definitely outweigh the cons if you ask me. The video is astonishingly good as the image stabilization and the price is currently $1,400. That is a huge win. So yes, the GH5 is still worth it in 2019. Well, there you go, my friend. I hope this video was helpful and provides you with some information on whether the GH5 is the right camera for you in 2019. If you've liked the video and it was helpful, do me a favor, hit the like button down below. And if you currently aren't subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? We'd love to have you here. Hit the subscribe button down below. And while you're at it, hit the bell to be notified as we come out with videos. Well, with that said, we're going to see you next time.